Hello, you're watching our Legends of Kalesia video review for KingGamer.com. I hope you enjoy. There is a turbulence of emotion when transitioning from the main menu of this exemplary title to the surreal gameplay. Appearances can be deceiving. What once arose as a merit proposing the interpretation of a well-established developer suffocates beneath the normal board game type of map and the shortfall of choice making that mirror the endeavor of a small indie studio. Condemn the thought of cross-platform availability. A product meant to be enjoyed on an iPad which has no keyboard or mouse has great strain when attempting to settle itself on a platform allowing for new ways to interact with the game. The final verdict has been vastly influenced by the choice of platform. If this had been your quick play session during lunch break or in any situation that derives a person from time, Legends of Kalasia is top notch. When it comes to a serious long-term commitment to dive within the exciting game world, a person will not feel satisfied. It has been preached many times before, yet here we are again with the same statement. What works appropriately on one platform most likely won't on another. Laborious decisions fell on the shoulders of BoomZap. They had to carve out important gameplay elements so that the touchscreen could take advantage of the game. Realistic battle situations, ordering your school around, true exploration have been ripped out of the final product. At first, a player goes to great lengths to appoint distinct heroes with a variety of units and then throws out all of those choices because battles are predecided. This is described as an auto-resolved battle mode. So contemplating about the entire situation, Legends of Kalasia wants to start off as a sophisticated experience and then end up a dreadful waste of time. Would it have been so hard to give us a battle setting in the way of Heroes of Might and Magic? To have the option of moving units in specific key locations, cast powerful spells in the direst plight especially when the game itself builds up to exactly that understanding. The heroes presented are seriously enticing. They are all unique, bring interesting units to the battlefield with them and make it hard to choose which ones you should bring along with you to the fight. This is the most important choice one has to make in the entire game. How you start usually predicts the outcome of the entire game. You can choose a warrior, rogue, wizard or merchant class based hero that will allow using battle cards from that specific deck. Here things get a little deeper. If for example you choose a warrior, it isn't necessary that an attack bonus will apply to him. He could be a defender and receive bonus defense which is a nice addition to the simplified strategy. Merchants could turn out to be both builders with less production costs for territory and castle improvements or chancellors that yield more gold when an occupied land. I feel the difficulty is out of balance in the game too. As someone who isn't a hardcore strategist and trying to squeeze through the easiest possible predicament, I found that the artificial intelligence was doing a prodigious job at keeping me at bay. Just as soon as I finished slaying one enemy, another was already at my doorstep wanting a piece of my glorious kingdom. The bots were acting too human, always trying to bring back into battle their fallen heroes, so the map was never truly empty from enemies. Conquering distant lands and at the same time spreading out valuable units to protect your kingdom was almost impossible to do. I also felt that even enemies with less lands were making an incredible amount of goats so they can easily produce up to 50 units on a single hero and take me on. At the end of it all, the strategy boils down to whoever was quickest and had more luck when capturing lands and building vast armies, which is sorrowful. Just trying to create a new account so I can play the game caused it to crash to the desktop. To be frank, crashing is the game's biggest problem. There isn't much else to break the fun that one might have with the title. One more gripe I have at this point is the decided price. Developers of Legends of Kalasia plan on asking for 20 US dollars for the complete experience and from what I have read the price is going to be the same on all devices. I cannot take it seriously because the full ported version of Bioshock costed $14 at the start and then quickly moved down to $10. Legends of Kalasia won't be anywhere near as amazing as the first Bioshock to ask for such an amount of money. On a positive note, when one buys the game for one platform by creating an account, he will receive the unlocked version for all of the other platforms without spending another penny. The frame rate is consistent at 60 frames per second. I'm not sure if that matters for this title in particular because it isn't a fast moving action game. 